let me get going. What I'm going to talk about, like I said, Catalyst.jl today. Um, and this is really a set of two kind of software libraries. Catalyst is a DSL for biological systems, and it's built on top of modeling toolkit. And a lot of people have worked on these packages. Uh, Chris and Torkel have done a lot of the Catalyst work with me. Um, Nicholas has also done some, done some. And then uh, Shashi and Yingbo, who aren't here today, have both done a lot of modeling toolkit work that we leverage. Um, so what is Catalyst.jl? So it's a modeling, modeling toolkit based symbolic representation for chemical reaction systems, which in the lingo here are stored as reaction systems. So it allows us to build a symbolic representation of a chemical reaction system. Um, it also is a domain specific language that sits on top of that, that allows us to easily specify chemical reaction networks and systems in a very clean notation. Um, so it's kind of these two core components, one that you can use programmatically and one that you can kind of use to quickly uh, kind of map out or type up reaction systems. Um, and then it supports conversions to a large variety of other modeling toolkit symbolic models like ODEs, SDEs, and junk processes so that you can actually simulate various reaction models from your reaction system. Um, and it also includes an API for querying and manipulating reaction networks. And so I think showing is always better than telling. So I thought I would just show you some simple examples to illustrate things today. Um, so here, for example, is a classical, what's called the repressilator model. Um, here's the DSL for specifying the reaction network where we type in all the different reactions and their corresponding rate functions or rate constants. Um, and you can use a, uh, you can use Nicholas's nice LaTeXify package to get a nice display of what those reactions actually are once you build the model. But the point is, is that this generates a nice modeling toolkit based symbolic model of this chemical reaction system for us. Uh, and this is just what those reactions actually are. So you can do things like look at graphs of the network using GraphViz. Um, so we, we use um, some well, very nicely uh, put together code developed by CatLab um, that we've now integrated and that we use to do GraphViz based rendering. So here you can see a little graph showing the different species of our chemical system in blue. And then the little orange nodes correspond to reactions and the inputs and outputs show the stoichiometry uh, for a given species going in and out of the reaction. Um, and this is one thing that we've, we've gotten together in more recently, and hopefully in the future, we can expand to more uh, other types of graph representations. So why should you use Catalyst? So I have a ton of reasons here, which I realize if I try to go through them all, will eat up most of my time. So I just wanna mention a few of the reasons and I'll show you some more with examples as we go. So one is it gives you a nice way to generate symbolic modeling toolkit models for uh, mass action type ODE models, but you can also have custom rate laws, so you don't have to have mass action rate laws. Nonlinear systems of equations to solve states, chemical Langevin SDE models, Gillespie type jump process models, uh, i.e. master equation models. Um, and recently this has started to be leveraged by people out in the broader community. There's a really, what looks like a really nice package that just became available this week on doing moment closures that lets you take a catalyst network as among other uh, input sources, and from it generate a variety of moment uh, modeling toolkit based symbolic ODE moment closure models that you can then solve um, numerically using further tooling. Um, because it's built on top of modeling toolkit, we all we get all the great things that Chris and Yingbo and Shashi and others have built, uh, like, like we can generate ODE right hand side functions that have certain optimizations like being multi-threaded and other types of optimizations for the generated code by doing analysis of the symbolic code. Uh, we can get automated Jacobians. Uh, one place where it's really helpful is for jump systems. So for jump process models, many of the simulation algorithms require what are called dependency graphs that show if a given reaction occurs, what reaction should be updated. All that kind of stuff can be generated for you in an automatic way by going through modeling toolkit and then um, converting from our reaction system into jump systems. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, what you end up with are nice compiled ODE SD jump process models that you can throw into all the other great SciML tooling for sensitivity analysis, parameter estimation, uh, bifurcation analysis uh, using Roman's package as uh, he'll talk about in the next talk and so on and so forth. Okay, so I just wanted to show you how simple this is. So we have that repressor, repressilator model that I started the talk with. Um, so here's how you convert it from a reaction system into a, a, a symbolic ODE model. You just say convert, and then we can use LaTeXify to see what the ODEs we get are, and this is the system that we get. Um, 
And so you see here these kind of hill function terms for the production of the mRNAs. You've got your constant production terms. You've got degradation terms, uh, which it looks like they've got a little number one that we need to get rid of. But otherwise, it gives us a nice way to kind of view what the uh, ODE model is uh, quite easily from our reaction system. And then solving it is very little more work than that. We just specify the parameters of the model, the initial condition, the time window to solve over. We construct an ODE problem, which is where the symbolic ODE model actually is going to get generated and converted into a function that can be compiled and actually uh, evaluate the, der the ODE derivative right-hand side. And then we can solve that using any of the differential equations.jl solver. So here I'm using the SIT5 Runge-Kutta method. And we end up getting you know, our nice classical oscillatory repressilator system um, like we would expect. Uh, so that's an ODE model. Jump process models are, are also very easy to do. Uh, so here you can see how to generate a jump process model. Uh, and like I said before, the nice thing about going through this mechanism of building it in Catalyst and then converting it to a jump system in modeling toolkit is that everything we need for the jump process solvers will be done for us. So dependency graphs for more sophisticated solvers will be done. Um, and also, inside the underlying jump process solvers, we have different ways of representing jumps that increase in performance. So if you have a jump that has an explicit time dependence, so an explicit dependence on t in its rate function, that's going to be a variable rate jump. If you have a jump that doesn't have such a dependence, it'll be a constant rate jump. If you have a jump where your reactions are just mass action reactions, it'll be a mass action reaction jump. And by having that classification, we can get improved performance uh, for each of those specific jump types. And that binning of which category a jump should go into is done completely automatically for you uh, when we generate the symbolic uh, jump system. Or I should say when the symbolic jump system that I create here is converted into uh, the actual method that we solve. And so here's how we actually take the symbolic jump system we've converted our catalyst model to. We define an initial condition, which needs to be integers, um, since we're working with the number of proteins in the system. We make a discrete problem to say that that's, we're going to solve a discrete system. And now we make our jump system, uh, our jump problem on top of it. And that will be where actually the jump system will get converted into compiled functions for evaluating the, rate, the various uh, reaction intensities or propensities that define um, the jump process. And here I specify that I'm going to use the rejection SSA method. My dependency graph that it needs gets generated automatically for me. And then I can solve the whole thing. Um, and I get out a much noisier looking version of the repressilator model. So those are kind of the quick and dirty of how we can generate catalyst models and convert them to other types of mathematical models. I just wanted to point out that this works very flexibly now by being on top of um, modeling toolkit. So for example, you can define custom rate laws that are essentially you know, very general Julia functions. Um, and this is, a, this is a very simple example where I've built a neural network to approximate one over x plus k, where x is my species and k is my mccallus menten constant. Um, I, you should never mimic what I've done here. This was not intelligently designed in any way. This was like, what can I just quickly put together as an illustration? Uh, but the point is, is I can build a function uh, neural network of X that evaluates an approximation to this. Uh, I can register it so modeling toolkit knows about it. And then I can throw that in as my rate law that I use for the reaction. And so here, this says that the rate law is going to be S times this whole rate here, VM times the neural network evaluated on S, which would be S over K plus S, which is our michaelis minton approximation. And then from there, it's just the same thing. Create the ODE problem and solve it. And sure enough, we get something that looks like the michaelis menten reaction. In fact, to make sure that I didn't mess it up, oh, I guess I don't have that code. Well, you can take my word that I ran it with the michaelis menten and it looked identical. So at least qualitatively, that worked just fine. Um, though I would not recommend mimicking how I did that. That was not a smartly designed neural network. Um, so one of the nice features we have is, of course, typing in all those reactions by hand, if you have a system with a lot of structure, can get kind of annoying. So the DSL sits on top of the modeling toolkit reaction system um, uh, model, which means that you can programmatically construct reaction systems when you have networks with a lot of structure. So here, for example, is, an, is what's called a reaction diffusion master equation model, where I have two species, A and B, that hop on a, on a lattice. So A at site one can hop to site two with rate one over H squared. A at site two can hop back to A at site one with rate 
one over h squared, and so on and so forth. The b's do the same. And then a's and b's at the same location can react uh, with some rate lambda to annihilate. So they're basically, the molecules are all hopping around. And when they're in the same site, there's some probability per time they can react. And this is super easy to generate with um, using the reaction system directly. So I just give my number of lattice sites. I specify that my parameters are going to be time and the lattice spacing. I build in modeling toolkit two array variables for the A at e each location and the B at each location. I make a vector to store all the reactions I want. And then I just loop through and create the reaction. So I have reactions for an A going from site I to site I minus one, I to I plus one, and you know, AI and a BI annihilating. And then I just create a reaction system from my list of reactions. And that's it. Now I've got all my reactions and I got my modeling toolkit model. The same code as I had before, I can convert it to a jump process representation. Uh, I can make a discrete problem um, and a jump problem from that, uh, which lets me actually simulate it. Here I simulate it using the composition rejection direct method, which is good for spatial systems. And you end up getting in something like this. So here I start with 10,000 A's at one end, 10,000 B's at the other end. I've cut off the top just so to keep the axes fixed. You let it go over time. You see the molecules diffuse inward. And of course, this bottom graph is showing the total number of molecules remaining in the system. So it shows you how many have annihilated to get, you know, to go away. Um, and you see, as time goes on, they diffuse inward and they react to go away. Um, this is not real time because actually it was much slower to make the movie um, in plots.jl I found than it was to actually run the simulation. So I had to pre-record that. Um, okay, so we've how far have we actually pushed this in practice? Um, so we've built I can, you can build decently sized spatial systems like the one I just showed where you have a lot of spatial hopping reactions. Um, but, uh, but of course, another question is how big of a purely reaction system where all the reactions are physical can you do? And so the largest that we've looked at so far is a, is a model for B cell signaling that has about 1100 chemical species and almost 25,000 different reactions. Um, it comes from this paper by Barua and all um, and it's a model for the early stages of B cell signaling. Um, we have a package reaction network importers that can take BioNetGen models and import them into Catalyst. And so this model is available as a BioNetGen model. So we could import it in in that way. And then at that point, you can convert it from the Catalyst model to your symbolic ODE or jump models and solve them using differential equations.jl. And just to show you what ends up happening for this example, so here's how it actually all works. It's very compact. Uh, we load in the reaction network using BioNetGen. Uh, so we get initial conditions, parameters, and then in part of loading it in, we generate the catalyst symbolic model. And then just like before, I convert it to a system of ODEs. I create an ODE problem, which takes that symbolic model of the, of the whole system and generates essentially the compiled functions for the ODE solvers. And then I can solve it um, and we get quite good performance, I think. The performance we get is as good or better than um, what we were getting in sundials, though I haven't benchmarked that uh, super recently, but uh, we, were, we were matching CVODE, in fact, at one point beating it a little bit. Um, and you can see here, this is just one particular species, the activated SYK protein in the system. Um, and what's nice about this example is it's very, it's a quite stiff system uh, that also has fairly large populations. So it's good, it's kind of a good benchmark for both the ODE solvers and for the jump process solvers. Okay, so the last thing I just wanted to mention in my last minute um, is a little bit about DiffEQ Jump. So uh, SciML has, you know, fantastic and amazing diversity of ODE solvers, but one thing that maybe is less well known is the jump process solvers, which is something that I've worked on. Um, and one nice thing, like I said about Catalyst, is it generates everything you need to use any of the jump process solvers. So in particular, we have a library of about eight solvers, um, and these include some very recent methods. Um, so there's the classical Gillespie direct method. Um, there's methods like Gibson and Brooks next reaction method that's very popular, though people who've benchmarked it know it actually is often not very fast. Um, so in many cases, it's not a good choice. Uh, and we have more sophisticated methods like the composition rejection method, which works very good for spatial systems, the recent rejection SSA, which for that B cell system I showed you is something like, oh, I forget, 150 times or more faster than trying to use, it's a, it takes like three seconds to solve it with the RSSA method versus 10,000 seconds to solve it with Gillespie's direct method. So it's a huge, huge speed up to use these kinds of methods 
um, for it. And then more recently, we got the rejection SSA with composition rejection, which is very good for spatial systems we found. Um, and so these are, the interesting thing is that which method one should use is highly dependent on the system one studying. Uh, direct, Gillespie's direct method works great for very small systems. These other ones are really good for larger systems uh, with sparse reaction networks. But the point is, is Catalyst gets you set up to use any of them with very little work on your part. So, okay, so I can see I'm basically out of time. Um, so let me just mention, there's a lot of things we're thinking about working on for the future, uh, in particular, um, compositional models, uh, optimizations for large networks and network analysis tooling. Um, spatial models is something that hopefully this summer we'll get a nice kick on uh, and so on. And so I'll just end there and thank everyone who's worked on contributing to Catalyst and Modeling Toolkit and mention my support and thank you all for coming.